But with Paul's expression, he's telling us why we need to pray for these people and authorities primarily is so that there should be peace and understanding that there is an outward peace and an inward peace. So, when Paul spoke, it was allowed to be us praying for all men. But what kind of prayer do we need to pray for the man? His objective is that the prayer that will bring what? Peace. Is that true? Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because remember, he said pray for all men. What is the prayer topic? What's the prayer point? To pray, if I say pray for me, there can be one million prayer points. So the context Paul spoke when he's taking on a general note that is what is understood and people have been doing that if they try to even do. But the context he spoke there's an emphasis of the kind of prayer. The prayer has to be a prayer for peace. So that verse 2 tell us and that is why in the leading of praying for all men is those in authority beginning with the head of states. So, Paul understood, but then at the time, it was allowed general because the Holy Spirit didn't give you the revelation, even though that was not really the spirit of the detail, but it was allowed general to pray for all men in authority, generally. But Paul understood that there cannot be quietness, there cannot be peace, and there cannot be prosperity of any land contrary to the kind of authority ruling the land. Hallelujah. Amen. So, if we understand that, we need to pray for the peace of our Jerusalem. But that peace cannot be expressed contrary to the right authorities that are peacemakers. But the Lord Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. So when you pray for peace, you must be blessed with any measure of prosperity and blessing that is coming from that land. But that same blessing for it to be evident in the land and that nation, there's a role played by the authorities of that land. And the authorities that will be there to cause that peace, which is that prosperity, have to be the ones that are the right ones. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, Paul was not saying we should just pray for authorities, for praying anyhow. We have to pray, though at the time it was allowed by the Holy Spirit for, for that not to be revealed, but now I speak to you because of the details of the position of the kingdom of God about the matter. Hallelujah. Amen. Now this is the point. Solomon by wisdom told us in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2. He said, when the righteous rule, the people what? Rejoice. Jesus. So, what does that tell you? Rejoice is a reaction from the action called peace. Hallelujah. Amen. If Amen. people, if there's no peace which includes prosperity, well-being, protection, people cannot rejoice. So in a nutshell, it also means Solomon is telling us that pray for, I mean, that when the righteous are in authority, when righteousness is ruling, there is peace and then people will rejoice. But he said, on the other hand, when the wicked are ruling, there is what? Opposite of peace, groaning morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Amen. if we now 
take that and apply it in the demand of Paul for us to pray for the nation and pray for the authorities, we will now see that we cannot just pray for the authorities generally. Because the authorities, there are those in authority as wicked. The wicked. And there are those in authority as the righteous. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The righteous in authority are the same that Christ says they are the children of God. They are the peacemakers. The same way you are also there, even when you are not holding a physical position in authority, but by your prayer, as a praying person for peace, you are also the spiritual person, peacemaker in authority. By the way, it is your prayer for the peace, which is the foundation of the real peacemakers, before the people who may sit in the physical position can really administer for there to be prosperity in that land. So, if the one in authority is wicked, is the wicked one, the wicked one there is described to be all those who, the opposite of those who are considered righteous in light. Now, listen, if you are praying as a peacemaker, praying for peace, you are considered righteous by the Holy Spirit. You are the one he calls the children of God. And you are the one who, when you are in authority, will see righteous, the result of righteousness, which is peace, that brings rejoicing. You are supposed to be partaker of that blessing. Don't you know if when need be you could be the one if there is a need as proved by destiny according to your destiny that God will also use to play a major role as the authority of that nation. You must partake of the blessing somehow. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, when Paul Amen. said we should pray for those in authority, the prayer is based on praying so that there should be peace, both the internal and the external peace. But we have already learned that the wicked in authority, the wicked are also all the description given by the Lord Jesus Christ which we can say unbelievers true or not religious context which we can say wolves we can we can say false prophets these are the word Christ used which we can say serpents vipers they are human beings but inside that's what the spirit they are in which we can say crafts if such is in authority you cannot pray for God to keep him there because his result of his rulership must be mourning, hope, anti peace. Because he cannot be a peacemaker. Hallelujah. Amen. So that now tells you that why we are praying for the peace of the land, we are praying for the righteous to be in authority of that nation is part of how you get the peace of that land, the prosperity of that land, by the righteous being in authority. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why the land is not experiencing the peace and the prosperity is because righteous are not in authority. But who will make the righteous to be in the authority? It is a prayer of you who is praying for the peace of that land that will pray for the righteous to be in authority that is part of praying for peace of the land not just asking god to send peace god has sent the peace already but how is the peace going to be administered it has to be administered concerning the land through the authorities of the land 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, with this understanding, we are going to start to pray. I want you to know this. Why the Spirit of God allowed that revelation, even from Paul, that we should pray for all those in authority and did not put distinction of the kind, but gave us through Paul what we are to pray for them for is that those in authority should administer that there should be peace, both the internal and the outward peace, which, in, which is what the prosperity is all about, holistically. Hallelujah. Amen. But that also means that now, with the end understanding from Proverbs 29 verse 2, that if the wicked is in authority, and we are praying for peace, and we know when the wicked are ruling, there will not be peace. We cannot pray for the wicked to continue ruling. The answer is simple. Pray for the Lord to bring the righteous in authority, which you are already part of them, by you being a peacemaker in your prayers. That's why somehow, if you are in de destiny, you must be partakers of that blessing. Any small blessing that is there, because the Lord said you are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. But Amen. at the time, many years back, the Spirit of God allowed us praying for those in authority generally. And that's why the revelation went like that. That's why people could not see this other dimension. Why? I explained it the other time. Because at the time, the wicked has the right to still be in authority of our lands, of our nation. What did I say? The wicked then were still having the right to still be the authority to rule our nations, our land. Because of the fall of man from Adam. Once man fell, the dominion to be in charge and rule the earth was the devils. And those who are allegiance to him have the right. So at the time Paul was giving the revelation for us to pray in those in authority, the wicked still has the right to be in charge. That's why Paul himself could not get the revelation to distinguish that they should pray but for the righteous in authority. Because you see, by Paul telling us that the reason to pray for those in authority is to pray that there should be peace. It was clear by Solomon's account in Proverbs 29 verse 2. It was clear that Paul would have said pray for the righteous to be in authority. Because that is how there will be peace. But Paul cannot say that at that time. The Holy Spirit can't give him that revelation at that time. Because the wicked were still by the approval of the Lord Almighty still have the right to be the one ruling. Mm. But now, somebody say now. Somebody now. say now. now. Say now. better now. 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 From the throne of God Almighty as the ancient of days. From the throne of the Lord God Almighty as the Christ of all ages. Sitting as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. As described by John in the book of Revelation. I saw upon the throne one sitting upon the throne. And I saw another throne one sitting as the lamb that was slain. The father and the son sitting upon the throne as the ancient of days. And his Christ the king of kings. So the heaven within the framework of few months back. A decision was made by a decree and established by the Lord and the King of the universe, the King of Kings, that the wicked has no more right to rule. Amen. The wicked has no more right to what? Rule. So now, that prayer Paul told us to pray in the context now that the mandate has been taken completely off from the devil and has been handed as described in the book of Revelation to those who are following the Lamb as the righteous one, as the children of God, as the true peacemakers, 
They are now the one giving the dominion by the kingdom of heaven. Based on that decree, it means that for us to get peace and the prosperity of our land, we have to concentrate our energy praying for the righteous to be in authority and rule with dominion. That means we have to pray for every wicked in authority to be replaced with the righteous because it is clear that only when the righteous rule that the people can have peace, which is the prosperity that brings rejoicing. Somebody say amen. Amen. So based on this position of the decision amen. of heaven, the decision which I'm aware of, not by assumption, that the rulership, the dominion to rule as authority over the land is for the righteous chosen ones. So we cannot now allow the wicked to still be ruling. But this is a news why our contribution matters. It's like you serve, you are a landlord. A tenant is staying in your house. And you made the agreement that the tenant has to stay in that house for, for three years. Praise the Lord. Hello. Is somebody understanding that to say amen? Amen. Amen. And the agreement is that that tenant will have to vacate that house after three years. Even if he is still having money to pay the rent. But the agreement is that three years time he must leave. Right? But now, three years came. And then landlord said, it is time for you tenant leave. And the tenant now say, I will not leave. Why will you send me out of this house? I am not owe you any rent. I am paying my rent. I'm even ready to pay you one year ahead. <laughs> you see that scenario? Yes. It, did somebody see that scenario? Yes. yes. So that's the position of what we are now in the world concerning the authorities of the nations of the world. The wicked that had the mandate permitted by God for them after the fall of man. When the decree has been taken that the time has reached, you have to leave. You can no more be in authority. They are like that ten and that say, no, I am even still wanting to pay you for a whole year. I'm not leaving. So you as a landlord, what will you do to that tenant? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is somebody understanding that light? What will you do to that tenant? Will you follow your hand and allow him to continue staying there? No. All the police. Oh. <laughs> what will you do for the tenant? To the tenant? Free him out. You have to get him out. What do you use to get him out? Police. Yes, police, but they say what they call them. What do they call police? Forces of law and order. You must enforce the law. Enforcement. If you don't enforce the law, will the tenant go out? No. And so, this is why a way spiritually for us to enforce the law is the word prayer. Say what? The word prayer. 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 That's why Paul said there. He said, first of all, I advise you and admonish you. Intercession. Prayers. With thanksgiving be made for all men. For all men. Men, those who don't know God. We pray for God to help them know him. Those who know him, we pray for God to draw them. 
But the reason to pray for all these men is culminating to that there should be peace, prosperity. And that is to be administered by the authority. That's why it says first those in authority. So we now knowing that the authority that will bring that prosperity, that peace of the land are only the righteous. So we have to pray for the righteous to take over. That is the primary prayer for the peace of any land. And that is what brings the prosperity of that land which you must be the first partaker of the land. Somebody say Amen. better Amen. Amen. You don't need to know the person in physical position of authority whether he's righteous or he's not righteous. But you have a man there as a peacemaker to see that peace, which is the prosperity of your land, of that nation, be established. And that mandate warrants you knowing that the truth says only when the righteous are in authority that you will have that peace. So what is the responsibility for us to pray for the righteous to be in authority? That is the prayer that will bring that peace, which is that prosperity, which you must partake of when you are praying this prayer. You are enforcing that law by discharging energy first. That's why prayer also is a force. Hallelujah. Prayer is a spiritual force that is stronger than all the police military put together. Because you, you are activating even the invisible super forces which are angels. That will be even more stronger for intervention than the physical police. But are we using it right? Now we know the truth. May we start using it so that we can prosper in the land. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that Amen. time, that time has passed where we just pray sloganly, Oh Lord, give us peace. Oh Lord, prosper our nation. No, the knowledge of the truth says until the righteous are ruling, you cannot see that peace, that prosperity. So the truth says we should pray for the righteous to be in authority. And we pray for any contrary to the righteous, any enemy of peace, which are the other side, who any of them, anyone in authority that is not the righteous must be replaced by the righteous. That enforcement in your prayer energy is what will begin to cause that. That is what will begin to change dynamics. The prosperity, the peace of the land will begin to be established and you somehow, somewhere, some way will begin to be partaker of those blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So that is a simple logical truth from Christ and the word of God. They have to be peacemakers before they can be peace. Understanding that peace means prosperity and total well-being. If the rulers are not peacemakers, you can hold one million United Nations resolution. It doesn't matter. So, we are praying as enforcement. And again, remember I've told us, and I, I have to say it again for us to take note. Every human being in this life has three things. Every human being has three things. He is having an opportunity to give. You have your time you can give as an investment for the land, for the nation, for the country. You have your energy, which is prayer, you can give. So prayer is an energy, which is why we, that is qualified to be the law enforcement. When you are praying for that land, praying for the peace of that land, knowing that the peace of the land comes by having righteous in authority, so specifically by petitioning. Because when we say prayer, there is a difference between prayer and just prayer and petitioning. Petition is a prayer which is based according to the rules, the truth, the word, the establishment. By the, the, the truth that when the righteous rule, the people shall have peace 
which is prosperity. And therefore, by that truth that says we should pray like Paul, that we should have that peace and prosperity, it means putting these two truth together from Paul, from Solomon, is evidence that we will pray for the righteous to be on authority in order for us to get that peace and the prosperity of the land. And that is sealed by the Lord Jesus Christ that says they are peacemakers who are the children of God. The children of God are the righteous still. Amen? Amen. So the rulers will be what? Peacemakers. Children of God. But how would they be called? The authorities will become peacemakers, children of God. When the children of God also who are peacemakers praying for the righteous. So praying for righteous to be authority bring righteous rulers, righteous peacemakers and the nation, the land prospers. Hallelujah. Whenever you are doing this, you are not praying for yourself, for your daily bread and butter. But you are investing in the highest prayer of love. Because when the righteous, because of your prayer, become, assume, let's just take a simple example. Hallelujah. Amen. Your Amen. prayer made a peacemaker, righteous one, becomes the president of your, of your country. Therefore, with dominion, righteousness will be ruling. And the result is that there must be what? Prosperity. Now, watch out. Watch out what I've just said. The righteous in authority is different from a religious figure. He's not praying for the Christian to be in authority here. He's not praying for the Muslim or whichever religion to be in authority. He's righteous. And remember, I've told you the righteousness is qualified by God, seeing him as a peacemaker. So he himself, that one must have been the one that actually is identified by God. So don't pray and have a name in your head that let the pastor of my church be the one to be this or a Christian. No. That righteous, <laughs> you may be praying this prayer, the righteous that may come to authority may not even know anything about any religion in this world. So, pray with that open mind. Hallelujah. But Amen. the truth says that if the righteous is in authority, there must be peace, prosperity, and the rest of all that follows. So, we have to know that and believe that. But look at the example, look at the example I said. Your prayer contributed. And you now have a righteous president. Now, no, 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 let them just limit it to president. But all the authority and the dominion are the righteous. The prosperity of that land is speaking. You are the one, even though you may not be in physical position of authority, but you are the one who is in authority. Do you know that? That's why Paul in the Old King James in that first Timothy chapter 2, he said that pray for the pray, we should pray for all men, for those in authority kings and those in authority so that we the old king james used the word so that we may lead we may lead in peace peace your prayer automatically brings you to be also in that authority so by law any benefit that the person who sit in that physical position of authority is benefiting god makes sure you are receiving that benefit as well that's why he said bless are you did you understand that revelation to say amen amen, amen. Understand this. This is what has to empower you of this prayer. The law is that. That's why Paul said, pray for those in authority so that we, the we is that you who prayed, you are also part of the people who sit in the physical position of authority. Don't you, because maybe it's one person, for example, that has to be president. So don't you, if you are not by destiny choosing to be that one, someone is sitting there. But you see, because your prayer contributed to that one who is a righteous there, that one also is one of the peacemakers, which is also somebody also who was praying. That one also who sits in that place is sitting there with all these peacemakers whose prayer also contributed to bring him in that authority. So by virtue of that, 
the heaven that is just says you are blessed. How is the blessing coming to you? It means angels have been programmed that the man who sits on the physical throne cannot benefit the blessings more than you who participated in being part of the throne in your prayer. So whatever he's enjoying, God must make sure you also have blessings in your own way according to your own destiny. Amen. Amen. This is why with this understanding, if your mm. destiny is not destined to be a politician or to be in politics, you don't need to go and be fighting for it if you are only knowing what it means to pray for the peace of the nation. You can be a farmer. You will be partaking of every blessing that comes there because of the fact that your prayers contributed for the righteous in authority. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said they are blessed. Blessed are they. Now, look at what that prayer is doing. Millions of people that are going to be killed, for example, by terrorists. Because the man, the ones in authority are peacemakers. And they understood because they're coming from the background of prayer of peacemakers. They themselves are peacemakers. They themselves are part of the prayers. They will understand the word of truth that says, if a man's way please the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Such authorities who are peacemakers will automatically know what to do with God and such kind of terrorists or wicked men will be at peace with them. Assume that action stops future terrorist plans that would have killed maybe a million people. You do not even you don't even know anything about those people where they are existing. But do you know that that your prayer contributed for the, those lives? Because your prayer contributed for the righteous to be in authority, and the righteous in authority do the righteous thing to be done for the terrorists to stop terrorizing, which they would have killed more one million people. So now, don't you see now where you must, that's why you must be, you must prosper. Because you now, you were just praying for the land. You were just praying for the nation. You were just praying for somebody to be authority. But you, are you seeing the effect? I'm trying to show you to believe why you should not doubt that you must prosper when you are praying this prayer for the peace of your nation or your land. You should not doubt when you are praying for the peace of your language, primarily in the context today, is to pray for the righteous to be in authority and not only be in authority, but God empower them to have dominion. So that even if there are still some few wicked with them, their dominion will prevail for righteousness to rule. So you see that this our small, small gathering and small prayers you are praying as a lone two people for the righteous to be in authority. Is saving lives. Let's keep terrorists aside. What about the prosperity? Because the one in authority is the righteous one that God calls righteous. Like David, a man after God's heart. Don't you see, for example, how even the natural resources that for the years to come they could not find, they will begin to automatically follow them? Through that process, you see that even the material wealth and resources, all these things will be happening. And now, look at how many people who are dying of hunger, they will be saved by that situation. Look at how many people who are dying for lack of medical facilities, they will be saved for that situation. All these good things happening is your prayer of love for the peace of the land, which is coming from you praying for those in authority. Are you seeing the importance of this? This is why you understand this you do this passionately because it is investment it's bigger than you investing money in stock exchange or any business you are investing your energy which is the biggest one for the righteous to be in authority 
and rule with dominion of righteousness, which by itself, that is how you are praying for all. That's the meaning of praying for all the men in the land. Because any decision taken by any authority must affect anybody within that geographical space of that territory. Hallelujah. Amen. So, that is how the best established powerful way to prosper. You are not praying for asking God for your bread and butter, but you are you will have more than what you ask. Because that's the greatest prayer of love. It means if one million people, if that nation has, for example, two million people, uh, 200 million people, for example, like Nigeria, or maybe two million, five million, 500 million or like United States that have almost about 400 million. If this, that number of millions of people, a decision taken by somebody in authority is going to affect about 400 million people. If that decision is taken in favor of the will of the devil, you know what is the consequence? There will be money. It must result to pains. And that must happen if the one in authority is the wicked. But if that decision is taken by the, plan, the agenda of God, which is righteousness, it will bring blessings, rejoicing, peace. And that must happen if the one in authority is the righteous. The righteous are approved by the Holy Spirit. Remember, I'm not talking religious people here now. Because don't limit this thing and say, oh, we have this one is a Christian, he was a bishop, this one is this. No. That's not the way the Holy Spirit is looking at who is righteous and who is not righteous. This thing you are doing in terms of the prayer you are praying for the peace of your land, which Christ qualify you to be the peacemaker. He said the Holy Spirit will call you the child of God. He's seeing every heart from their sacred place who is really doing that. In their own ways, even in different ways that they may not even be the religious ways. Now, just imagine 400 million people in America that will be affected by a decision taken by a wicked one in authority. And that has been averted through your prayer that has caused a righteous one to be there. Is that not more than any material money you are looking for? For the fact that if your prayer alone contributed to rescue about 4 million, 400 million lives. So look at the way indirectly you are wealthy. And of course the world must come. Somebody say amen. Amen. because he said your labor in the Lord shall not be in vain when you are doing that praying for the peace of the land praying for the righteous to be in authority and, and in dominion who are you laboring for? you are laboring the Lord the real and the best way to prosper hallelujah and because I've said every land is wealthy every land is rich even if they say it's the poorest nation, you, the level of the richest still remaining there because you are the condition for you to prosper is to pray for the peace of that nation, to pray for the righteous to be in authority. He said they shall prosper that love. Thee. The word of God cannot lie. The Lord Jesus says you shall prosper. That's why I say you are blessed. Let us stop wasting our time in this bread and butter manipulative kind of looking for prosperity. Toasting left and right, but follow the path of the truth. Somebody say the truth makes free. The say the truth sets free. Set free. The, the truth sets set free. free. So I want you, the reason why I'm taking time to emphasize is that I want you to pray this prayer with the same passion and in discharge enough vocal energy. Like you were praying for God to bless you with money. Like you were praying for God to heal your body. Because that is why we mostly look at this one casually. But we are not seeing that that's the real place where the real blessings is. Did somebody hear that to say I hear? Yeah. He said let the, them that have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit says. I pray the Lord will anoint your ears to hear and understand. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have this as part of your major prayer project now henceforth. Don't bother. You may not even sometimes praying for even our personal needs are very immaterial with this truth. Because 
one person in authority, one signature decision is affecting millions of people's life. And I mean authority in all levels. I'm not just talking political authorities in nations. Even somebody's authority in business, a business decision is taken there, can affect the economy of a whole country. Do you know that? What even somebody in a village who is sitting there in authority in the name of a chief or a king that can take a decision and destroy some people's destiny if it's a wicked one that is there. When I'm talking authority, look at, for example, United Nations. When the genocide in Rwanda took place, which was counted that almost one million people were killed, they confessed later in regret that they had the opportunity to stop that. But why didn't they stop it? Because they were not the righteous in authority. Look at what I'm telling you happening in Israel and Gaza. Look at what is happening in Russia and Ukraine. Look at what is happening in almost all the parts of the world. Forget about the person. Just know that it is wickedness that, wickedness that is ruling. That's why you are seeing groaning and moaning and pains. Just know that it is righteousness and the righteous ruling when you are seeing the peace and the prosperity. So, with that, we can know that we, that's why Paul says, we are the one to lead the prosperity, the peace. Stop complaining. Stop castigating. Stop speaking downward about your land or your nation. He says, you who are his own, call his children. Pray. He will heal the land. Any measure of small blessing that is in that land, it must first be distributed to those who are the peacemakers praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we are going to pray for the peace of our Jerusalem, of our land. My God and Father, let there be peace in my land. But we are not praying it this way. I've already given you the revelation. The answer of that peace to that land, we are thanking God. God already has provided the peace already. God, first of all, desires peace to be everywhere. But the administration of that peace is based on those in authority. So the prayer is for the righteous to be in authority. Now, there are some righteous in authority in every nation, every geography, every constituted authority. Oh, let me give you something the Holy Spirit has just showed me now. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at look at something that doesn't look authority because it is not really it is not really political in sense, but it's still politics. The Lord just showed me a flash of a decision in the area of football that killed people. And why did that decision kill people? Because the authority to make that decision is a wicked one. And I saw the Lord show me that decision. What happened is that people died because they saw expectation that their team was going to win. But the unfortunate thing is that the authority in charge of those sport to make the decision for that to happen were influenced contrary because the authorities were not the righteous. Can you imagine? Now we always saw people collapse, died, complain, and all the stuff. But you see the, 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 the place where the origin of what the Lord is showing me now came from. I don't want to mention the particular uh, uh, team that I saw. But just understand that this is happening generally. To tell you exactly that, the aspect of the authority we are saying here is not limited only in terms of political president, prime minister, parliamentarian, and stuff. Look at people's life from what the Holy Spirit is showing me here that we just know they died. And we, of course, there must always be a physical and medical scientific reason. It was high blood. Uh, <laughs> I heard some journalists, they were always advising that kind of thing. If you know that you have this kind of uh, cardiac high blood problem, make sure you don't watch this kind of matches that are on tension. There is always a physical reason for something. But what I'm telling you now 
Did you see where the reason of those lives came from? Because money was supposed to be discharged, which was not, was embezzled. And the reason for the embezzlement is because it was not a righteous that are in authority. Because if it was a righteous in authority, the righteous will be following Luke 6.38. He will instead give instead of taking for stealing. So because the wicked or the righteous was not there, let me use that one politely. There was money to be used that was no use. And by that, it affected certain things that would have been done which affected that shock. Or which created that shock. Everything in this life is ruled by someone or authority. An authority is any man or any woman that has a decision to make concerning anything between one or more people. Father, let every one of your righteous ones, the one you have called your children, the peacemakers. Everyone that is in authority now. Lord, empower them to have dominion. This is the first prayer we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. There are those who are there who are the righteous. But they are not having the dominion. They are subjugated. Some are in concurrent position, parallel position. I mean, you know, like some, especially in political sphere where somebody can be a prime minister, but the decision of a secretary, a secretary general is stronger than his own. But formality, prime minister means supposed to be the, the head. So, this is the first prayer we should pray that the Lord should empower everyone in authority that is already a righteous one to have dominion to rule with righteousness so that his opinion should not be countered hallelujah amen amen and follow suit as you pray you ask the lord to have mercy upon every righteous one in authority who has compromised because that's also the reason why they are not ruling they are not having dominion so we are going to pray for the righteous already in authority that the Lord, by mercy, will empower them to rule with dominion. Wherever, any part of the world. And in this prayer, you are mentioning your nation or your land or your country as you have heard about the land. Specifically, if you want to prosper in those land or those nations. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are asking the Lord to empower them who are already in authority, which are righteous, to rule with dominion. And by mercy, to forgive, to Forgive them for those who have compromised and restore them to dominion. Because that's what I'm seeing why it's weakening the ability to prevail. As we have learned the other day, that walking in holiness by the spirit of holiness, being obedient of righteousness, is the master key that brings power. So even if you are a chosen one and you are compromising, once you are there as a child of God compromising, you just be remaining by mercy. You won't have power. Then those wicked ones that are there will be dominating you because they are using their occultic evil powers will be stronger than your own. You you have compromised the power of your God. So we are praying for God to have mercy and forgive all those in authority, all the righteous in authority that have compromised and restore them back with dominion. And power to rule in righteousness in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Say after me loud and clear, my father, my God. My father, my God. I stand in agreement now. I stand in agreement with your children now. here. With your children. And all over here. the world. And all over the world. And I ask you by mercy. And I ask you by mercy. To forgive all the righteous. Forgive all the righteous. Who are in the authorities of my nation. That have compromised. Forgive them, Lord. Forgive them, Lord. And restore them with your power. And restore them with your power. And dominion. And dominion. To rule in righteousness. To rule in righteousness. In their various positions of authority. 
In the, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now understand. How do they rule? Every authority rule with one simple principle. Rulership is by decision. You make decisions. So you see, if somebody is in authority who is a child of God, but he has compromise, because he's compromised in that position, his heart will be darkened, his spirit will be blind. So even when he's making decisions, he can't make the right decision of light. So he will be ruling in darkness. So as we are praying that the Lord by mercy should forgive all those who are in the authorities of our land, of our nation, that have compromised God for the sake of his agenda for that nation. For the sake of his agenda, because God has a plan for every nation. He said from one nation, he made all the nations of the world, according to the accounts in Acts, the apostle. For the fact that they exist, and the authorities are constituted, God has a plan and an agenda. For the sake of his agenda, and even for the sake of his elect, for the sake of the lives of those who are in danger, if the wicked continue to rule. Let the Lord have mercy on any righteous one in the authority of our nation who have compromised and restore them with power and give them dominion to rule in righteousness so that they will be making decisions of righteousness that will have power to prevail wherever there is any counter opinion in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So when I leave you, pray this prayer effectively as you discharging your energy spiritual energy as an investment which is what is qualifying you to be blessed as a child of God who is a peacemaker in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, loud and clear, my Father, my God, my Father, my God. I stand in agreement with your children now. You have called your children because they are the peacemakers. And I ask you, O oh God, by your mercy to have mercy upon every righteous one. Have mercy upon every righteousness. Who is in the authority of my nation? And has compromised for any reason. Has compromised to your righteous ways for any reason. Lord, for the sake of your agenda concerning that land. Have mercy upon every of your righteous one in authority of my nation. Have authority to mercy on everyone that has And empower them with your dominion. Rule in righteousness. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and lift up your voice and pray that prayer as you have heard. Pray with power, pray with passion. Oh Lord, I thank you, my Father, my God. I pray by your mercy. I lift up to you all the authorities of my nation who are your righteous ones. Who are your children? Who are the peacemakers? I ask my mercy, Father. All those who have compromised, that have gone away from your righteous way because of bribery and corruption. All those who have compromised, that have gone away from your righteous way because of carnality of the flesh and materialism. Have mercy upon them, Father. Forgive them of all their compromise and unrighteousness. And Restore them back, O oh God, with your power and dominion. Grant them dominion to rule with righteousness, even as they exercise their rulership in their position of authority. Father, we stand in agreement, even as your children you have called the peacemakers. We tap into that blessing you have called us to be. I pray. 
Restore their right mind. For all. Restore their heart and spirit. Your children, the righteous, the authority of my nation. Jesus, that you to them. You are glorified in everything. Those that have compromised, Lord, have mercy and forgive them. Restore them with your power and dominion to rule in righteousness. And let them dominate all the wicked that are in parallel position and parallel decision with them in their position of authority. Father, for all your children here, for everyone as we are praying for our nation, all the nations, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I say, pray this prayer with passion. Father, empower the righteous in authority with dominion. Let all the righteous ones in any position of authority in my nation, whether in the political field, in the military field, in the business field, in the sports social field, in the cultural traditional field, in religious fields, wherever, oh God, in any area of authority in my nation, I pray specifically for all the nations of Africa and Cameroon in particular and Nigeria in particular and Ghana and South Africa. I pray particularly in of the United States of America and the Americas as a whole and even all the nations of the world. Father, let all the authorities in this nation who are your righteous chosen ones and in any of my nations that have compromised to your righteous way, Father, by mercy, forgive them and restore to them your power and dominion to rule. Let their decisions stands in righteousness at all times. Le copra casolia caraba, beli koto li baraka teli katali baraka te. Zegle katali kla baraka te si akota leba. Meri kuteli pa. Empre kuteli ya bagasi ke taliba. Mele krepa rukata, makasu teli kata. Mele kere peri akota leba. Mesian do kata li kapara toke paria. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name and Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are praying. Amen. In the mighty name and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are praying. Amen. I decree and I declare by mercy. Jesus. Let the mercies of the Lord speak for us. Amen. Let the message of the Amen. Lord speak on behalf of our nations. Amen. Let the nations that we are attached to and all the nations of the world Jesus. receive the healing because of God's mercy. Amen. Amen. Father, by your mercy, O oh God, all the righteous ones in authority that have compromised, whether by bribery and corruption or all forms of unrighteous ways. Amen. We ask you, Lord, by your mercy upon them, yes, oh that God. you will restore to them your power and dominion to rule Amen. in righteousness. In the Amen. name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, we ask you that you will restore to them your power and dominion to rule in righteousness, to be in dominion above all others with them, even the wicked that are sitting in parallel decisions and positions in offices with them. Let mm. your righteous ones, your chosen ones in light, the ones you have called your children, the peacemakers, have dominion to rule. Have dominion in all the affairs of this world. Have dominion in every position that they are in, that their decisions will prevail at all time in righteousness. We decree and we declare a soul in agreement in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
In the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, so let it be now and forevermore. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Even as we pray and we continue to pray, we thank you for the blessings we are receiving because you have called us blessed as peacemakers. Thank you for using us and blessing us by bringing peace, prosperity in our land, in our nations. Thank you for healing our land. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, remember, prayer is discharging energy. It's the gift when you are praying for, when you are interceding, which you are not praying for yourself. You are giving. Like somebody who was giving substance. As I said, there are three things everybody has to give. Your time, your energy, which is what is prayer when you intercede and supplicate for others or for land and territory. That's why you are giving higher when you are praying this kind of for, for nation. Because the higher level of love you are discharging for many people. So discharge the energy. And of course, the last thing to give is your substance, your money or wealth or resources. But when you give your substance, it's powerful anyway. But the material aspect of it is felt by some man whom you give to. But when you give your energy, you are giving it to God on behalf of that land or that man. That is why it is more powerful. But it is energy. So it's not just the words. Because I've explained to us the sound has a frequency which has a wave and sound wave has energy. And the energy increases by two main factors. The frequency how frequent you are saying that thing and the amplitude, the volume, they all increase the power. So the energy you are discharging with high vocal expression, with the frequency is spiritually measured and is adding to do faster or better what we are declaring or praying for hallelujah amen and it's also measured in the record of what is recorded in our spiritual account as the any the blessings we are drawing that's why you must receive the blessing you are blessed for praying for the peace of the land so the energy you are discharging is a measure of like the investment you are making if they say you invest one thousand dollars any one thousand dollar you put you get ten thousand dollars it means the factor of multiplication is ten amen? amen now in that equation if you put one thousand dollars you have ten thousand dollars recorded in your account right amen? Amen. amen but if you have the means to put two thousand dollars why do you want to remain putting only one thousand dollars because if you put two thousand dollars, what will be recorded in your account? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. So, understanding that prayer is energy discharge, and especially when you are interesting like this, you are investing. That's why you are blessed for that. So don't keep that sound and that energy there, and use it only to make noise and complain and gossip. Use it for what is positive for you. This is why this is how to prosper in any land. Hallelujah. Amen. So, do it effectively as you have the energy. You are investing for your future. You are investing to prosper in that land. And why not even take the lead? <laughs> Oh God, if I tell you people certain things that have happened now in the spirit, how God is calculating things and handing to his children based on certain things, you are in charge of this, you are in charge of this. 
as I have said one time, 